Greetings, Kindred. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. So, at the full moon, I said it was going to be a very triggering time, emotionally, and, um, you know, I could see some little outbursts going on there. And, yeah, I mean, that's been a continuation. You know, the last two weeks, I've seen a lot of triggers going off all over the place. And, um, yeah, it's been really intense. And, you know, I've had quite a few messages um, from people that just don't know where they're at right now or where they're heading. And, um, yeah, I'm really sorry I haven't been available. Of course, it affects me too. And, um, yeah, it's been a really, really intense time. Now, I was hoping to do this video with the Magi, um, but even he's going through stuff right now. So, you know, I thought I really need to get on here and talk about this new moon solar eclipse that's taking place tomorrow. So I'm recording this early morning on the 24th of October. Um, I'm due to go travelling today. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get this up and out to you. So, you know, during these last two weeks, you know, Pluto has also shifted forward a degree here. It's now 29 degrees, so that shift does have relevance as well. So there's been a lot going on energetically, and it has been, you know, very intense, very triggering, and um, for many, very emotional. Now, the new moon actually begins on the 25th of October at 11.48 in the GMT time zone. It will take place at 6.48 in the morning in the EDT time zone. And in the AEDT time zone, it will take place at 21.48. So that's when the new moon actually begins. Now, the solar eclipse will actually occur about three hours beforehand. And um, so that will be at 8.58 in the GMT time zone, at 4.58 in the EDT time zone, and at 18.58 in the AEDT time zone. So, you know, there's three hours in between the solar eclipse and when the actual new moon begins. Now, you know, solar eclipses is a very masculine energy. So it really is all about our conscience mind. And, um, you know, the solar eclipse is also called the dark moon. So it's where things seem really dark and there's a lot of blurred lines going on at this time. Now, with solar and lunar eclipses, because a lunar eclipse will always you know, take place after a solar eclipse, it kind of like, when I say blurred lines, I mean, you know, even here with Mercury that rules the mind in quincunx with Neptune, which is all about our dreams and our visions. So, you know, there is definitely not conflict, but, um, you know, a lack of clarity. You know, it's um, a dictomy. When we see a quincunx, it's like there's two planets that just really are not in understanding of each other's energy. So it's really going to be hard to, like, you know, find little escape routes. Do you know what I mean? But, the, you know, like with Mercury retrograde, we always have to be careful of starting anything new when it comes to contracts and and stuff like that, you know, electrical equipment, um, etc., etc. So, to me, it's the same with the eclipses. It's not a time to start anything new. It's definitely a time for reflection. Because with a solar eclipse, we can tend to jump into decisions or you know, misjudge things, because it's a very foggy time. You know, it's a time where we need to follow our instincts more than our rational thinking, because our rationality is a little bit out there. It's a little bit like, I said, blurred lines. So, you know, this is a time just to take it easy 
and just be observant. You know, because things are not always what they seem with a solar eclipse. Though it's very active, you know, it does rule external global events around the world. And at the end of the day, it does bring in an awareness of hidden things, you know, where revelations will soon follow. But the revelations don't really come out until the lunar eclipse or just after the lunar eclipse. Because I see, you know, the solar eclipse, there's a lot of confusion going on. You know, we're all feeling this really dark energy. Things can actually feel pretty depressing at a time of a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. See, but a lunar eclipse to me, I mean, for all you people out there understand tarot, you know, the lunar eclipse is actually the tower card. It's where everything kind of has to break down for the light to shine itself onto the truth. And that lunar eclipse won't occur. I think it's the 11th of November we have a lunar eclipse. So over the next couple of weeks, you know, we're going to be in this very deep, dark shadow energy. And, you know, I've had a few people approach me on gaining some clarity about direction in life. And I would say, just chill out because solar and lunar eclipses, the energy of them do kind of like linger for around six months. So I would say do not start anything new. Do not make important life decisions until around about the March equinox. And remember, we've got Pluto going into Capricorn in February. We've also got a few other planets like Uranus. Um, I think we'll be moving is it Uranus or Saturn? Anyway, there's a lot of planetary movements going on early next year. And um, I did speak about them um, in my last video I did with Magi, which I think was a couple of months ago. So if you look through my playlist, um, you know, if you're listening to this on um, Rumble or, or Bitchute, I would say go to my website and go back several podcasts to find that video. It's a pretty long video, but, you know, we do cover a lot of the planetary energies that are occurring right up until, you know, Pluto goes into Capricorn. So, yeah, I would say, you know, keep a low profile until the March equinox, but definitely be observant because there's going to be a lot of changes of perception you know, especially since we have this T-square towards the goddess palace. Now, where is it? I saw that. Ah, here. So we've got Chiron, the wounded healer, in opposition to Mercury. So, you know, things, you know, we're not feeling at our best at the moment. And it's affecting us mentally. And in square to the goddess palace, who's transiting in Gemini at the moment, you know, Gemini can often be in two minds. It's a scattered, it's a scattered energy when it comes to our way of thinking, when it's in harsh aspects. Now, if it wasn't in harsh aspects, I would say it's inventive thinking. But, you know, palace is in sextile to Uranus. So that's what I'm saying. There's going to be a lot of changes going on over the next several months, the next definitely four to five months in our perception. There's going to be a lot of changes there. And, you know, Gemini to me also represents division in its kind of harsher aspects too. You know, a lot of people see this as a twin energy and it's kind of not, I've explained this before, this is two brothers that came from two different mothers and they both have um, completely different points of view. But they were both married 
to twin sisters or one set of the brothers were because the Gemini is a fourfold energy. It represents two sets of half brothers. And, um, you know, I will get into that. You know, I'll talk about that more another time. I have spoken about this before. So it's all about perceptions and our perceptions will be changing. It will be flipping backwards and forwards over the next few months. So we need to be aware of that. Um, you know, so the solar eclipse, the new moon solar eclipse will take place in the sign of Virgo in the true lifetime sky. Now, this is not sidereal, this is not tropical, this is astronomical. And the solar eclipse will be conjunct Venus. Now, when Venus conjuncts um, a solar eclipse, it really is about financial challenges, you know. It's very conflicting. And we can tend to, you know, be a lot in self-criticism, not feeling good enough. You know, we're putting in all the work, but not really reaping the rewards that we feel we deserve. So I just feel that many of us will feel a little bit cheated and maybe, you know, feeling a little bit jaded with these energies. But like I said, things are not always what they seem. And um, I think, you know, that's a hurdle we all need to overcome. And, you know, I feel that the scene is being set out there for us to feel this depression, depressing, sorry, dark energy. You know, the scene is being set like subliminally. You know, my daughter said to me the other day, that um, she said, Mum, you know, every time I get on the tube to go to uni, you know, all the posters I'm seeing, it's all got hell in there or it's kind of just really dark stuff. And um, I said, yeah. I said, and, and all that, you know, all that promotion really is subliminal. It's really you know, subconsciously keeping people in a place of darkness, dark thoughts, you know, depression. You know, there's a lot going on in our world right now. And, you know, we don't know really what it is. We don't really know the truth because there's so much conflicting information. And, um, you know, we do have people that think they know it all and they put themselves out there. And, you know, I'm speaking from what I'm seeing astronomically that's going on with the planets because, you know, there's a lot of um, beautiful energy occurring too, but it's like underneath the surface. So if we can all get out of our heads at this time, and get more into our spirituality, you know, tap more into our instincts, let our inner guidance be our compass right now, then, you know, I think we will fare better under these energies. I mean, don't get me wrong, everybody's going to be affected, whether you're spiritual or whether you're logical. You know, if you're more in a logical mind, it's going to be harder for you. If you're more in your spiritual self, it will be easier to ride these very intense waves. And it's not to say that this solar eclipse is, you know, the energies are not worse than any other solar eclipse in some senses. I mean, solar eclipses are always pretty hard to navigate you know, as well as lunar eclipses. But I think it's because of the state of the world right now. It just makes it seem deeper and darker. So, you know, we really need to get ourselves into a place of comfort, not necessarily in our environment, because I feel, you know, we've done what we can do in the time that we've had, you know, in that time where we've gained clarity to know that we need to get ourselves into a more comfortable position. You know, for some of us, you know, 
we need to just ride it out. We need to find peace within ourselves because we're really not going to be finding it in this world right now or in the media. You know, so we have this um, flow of energy going on. Now, that's not to say that this is like the beautiful energy that I'm talking about, because this, you know, like I've always said, trines are just an easy flow, whether that's for good or ill. It's just a flow that just flows very easily. So in a triggering kind of setting, you know, it's easier to become triggered. But in like um, a more happy setting, it's easier for us to feel that sense of bliss. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, trines can also make us lazy where, you know, we don't want to put in the work. We just want to float along with things. You know, we don't really want to observe or think about it too much or get in depth. We just, we just tend to go with the status quo. And, you know, this particular grand trine can, you know, actually make us quite snappy because of the planets involved. I mean, we've got the solar eclipse with Venus, which is... You know, there's a lot of darkness around how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about, you know, our creativity, how we feel about our finances. You know, we're not in a good place. And, you know, the trine does lead over to Mars. And we can see the Black Moon Lilith is just going to cross Mars. So that has been very triggering. Um, so there's been a lot of kind of explosive you know, triggering, um, you know, very snappy, very kind of like, you know, verbally, probably verbally explosive. Um, I would say more so with the Black Moon Lilith in Gemini. And in Taurus, I mean, Taurus, the bull's known to like, just erupt out of nowhere. It's like he bottles it up, bottles it up, and then bang, he just goes off. So, um, you know, we're quick to fly off the handle with this energy. And, you know, it's hard for us to move forward with our passions because we are under so much pressure with the current environmental climate where we're kind of losing hope or we're suffering too much hardship, you know, because things seem very, very bleak right now on the surface, but remember, you know, this astronomy has to include the sign of a focus, and those focus represents the phoenix, the rebirth, the rebirth of hope, the rebirth of like, you know, getting more in touch with our magic, you know, with our power of manifestation, with our power of unconditional love, you know. So this is why we really need to get more aligned with our spiritual energy right now, because that is what is going to help see us through. Now, I would recommend voicing, you know, so if we're singing, if we're chanting, if we're praying, I feel those will be good things to do because I feel we need to express in sound. So sound therapies, um, sound bathing, singing bowls, chimes, anything along those lines. Music, if you're a musician, you know, play your instrument, but also hum or sing as you're playing your music. Do you know what I mean? So... That is what I would definitely recommend for this solar eclipse. Yeah, so this opposition with Mercury and Chiron, you know, towards the goddess Pallas, you know, it really, you know, apart from us being scattered in our, in our mental faculties, <laughs> you know, 
and solar eclipses will add to that because the solar eclipse does blur our kind of like way of thinking and you know we can actually feel absolutely sure that we know what we're doing only to find out that we've made a mistake so it's so important we don't make life changing decisions right now about anything but this T square it also you know it's very hard for us to express our true feelings and um you know, but it can also be about deep conversations that do take place, um, but may feel uncomfortable. So if we're in conversations with people and it's on a deeper level, it can actually trigger us because we're not really in the right place to have those conversations. And also with Mercury and Square to the Goddess Palace, we can tend to overthink things. And, you know, like I said, this. um, we're in two minds. There's definitely a lack of direction and a changing of perception. So, you know, we really need to ride these waves and go through all the different thought processes and wait until this energy comes to an end. And like I said, this energy is going to take us through until, like, early next year. So I would say definitely up to the... Um, spring equinox here in the northern hemisphere so the march equinox i would not make any life-changing decisions some of us may be forced into making decisions because of the circumstances of our situations um which is unfortunate but like i said we need to be in our spiritual power so we can ride these waves go with the flow but understand that that flow can be very triggering and very kind of like self-defensive do you know what i mean so but for those of us that can hold off i would advise that we do hold off making those life-changing decisions and you know we also have another t square with pluto in opposition to the goddess palace in square to Mercury. So this can be very intimidating. You know, this energy can be, again, about a loss of direction. It can also be about absent-mindedness, you know? And that's why I'm stressing this solar eclipse's energy when it comes to blurred lines, because all the aspects and where the planets are placed are suggesting that we're not going to be in the right frame of mind to make big decisions or to change our course in life. So, you know, we can also become very obsessive about things and there can be a little bit of paranoia out there or jump into conclusions or, you know, for some, you know, it can be very intellectually intimidating or manipulating. So we need to watch out for those energies or for those type of like, you know, situations that we may come across. So again, you know, we've got to stay in our power, stay in our self-control. Do not try and over-rationalize things because Virgo can be too much in their heads as well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of changes going on. I mean, Uranus is still conjunct the North Node, which is like sudden changes that's been going on for quite a while. You know, so we just really need to chill out as best we can and just chant, sing, pray, whatever's your thing. And, um, yeah. That's my advice for the solar eclipse. And all I can say is please keep the faith in yourself. And as always, I'm sending you peace and much love. Take care.